the world of chiropractic, where we take one epic journey around the world as we explore the seven regions of the World Federation of Chiropractic. My name is Dr. Rebecca Wilkes, and I invite you to travel with me as we go on this exciting adventure around the globe. Dr. Facini, welcome to the world of chiropractic. It is my honor to be here with you and with everyone that's here to listen to us. So you are the director of academic, scientific, and educational affairs with the Brazilian Chiropractic Association. Can you tell us about the Brazilian Chiropractic Association and maybe what you do? Of course, that's a big name, isn't it? Uh, the Brazilian Chiropractic Association is the only national organization in Brazil that represents the chiropractic profession nationally and the profession of chiropractic uh, from Brazil abroad internationally. So we are affiliated to the World Federation of Chiropractic and we, will, and we also are affiliated with the Federación Latinoamericana de Chiropractica, which is the Latin American Federation of Chiropractic or FLAQ, FLAQ. So that's who we, work, who we are politically and uh, who we work with. The Brazilian Chiropractic Association is a, an association that represents around 1,250 chiropractors, which are the quantity of chiropractors we have in Brazil. Uh, we are not regulated in Brazil. Chiropractic is not regulate, fully regulated as a profession, which means that uh, while we don't have a council, a council is in Brazil is a different institution in which people have to be a part of it. In the Brazilian Chiropractic Association, uh, people are part of the Brazilian Chiropractic Association if they wish to be, if they believe that we're doing a good job and that we're serving the needs and, uh, and the profession in a good way, then they will come and join us on our path towards the growth of chiropractic in Brazil. And well, we pretty much have like, Half the chiropractors in this country are not only uh, well affiliated, nearly everyone is, but mostly around 50% actually pay their dues. So we think that's a great achievement. All of the, the, the other directors, including myself, we're all voluntaries and we have ever been so since Brazilian Chiropractic Association's inception, which was in 1992 some good years ago. So it started with a group of chiropractors which were around five in the beginning. We have very little chiropractors and there's, they already started organizing themselves politically. And from Cira Borges, which was our first president, which a lot of people here might have heard about, Cira Borges actually brought chiropractic to the country and she has served as the first Brazilian, uh, the first president of the Brazilian Chiropractic Association. And what we do mostly is trying to organize the profession. We work uh, on creating courses, continuing education, congresses, and opportunities for networking among chiropractors. We fight for regulation because we're trying, we currently have two bills. I, I believe it's say that uh, in English, it's uh, projects to become regular laws uh, that are currently uh, underway. So we're trying to create a regulated profession where currently there's uh, only a three chiropractic, um, well, there are three universities who offer the chiropractic program in Brazil. So that's pretty much what we do. We fight for the profession and we try to create a good educational background and we work with everyday uh, bureaucracies that arise and we try to do it all in accordance with the growth plans of the WFC and the FLAC. Aside from not being regulated in Brazil, uh, what are some social or political limitations that the Brazilian Chiropractic Association uh, maybe recognizes or is working towards trying to mitigate in Brazil? 
The regulation of chiropractic is an important step in first place to make that to make it so that only people who are duly qualified as chiropractors have studied a fully um, a full program, which in Brazil takes uh, five years, uh, only those people should be allowed to call themselves chiropractors. That's what we seek with regulation. Uh, right now, with no regulation, anyone can open up a clinic just outside my door with a big sign saying chiropractor or chiropractic office. And there's nothing anyone can do about it because that's what happens with unregulated professions. So that's one important thing. The other, one of the things that I find, find most important is that by regulating the profession, you will make it easier to access the public health system. So in Brazil, we have something called the unified health system, which is a system of health, which is free for all, including foreigners, anyone in the land, crossing it or living around it, are entitled to free, uh, to free healthcare for its life, for their lifetime. And uh, having more chiropractors working inside that system may be greatly facilitated by regulation. So that's one great step forward that we're trying to advance as well. Uh, but aside from that, the lack of regulation does not mean anything bad for practicing chiropractors. Sometimes in the past, people uh, would worry that by not being regulated, they might not have the right to work or be somehow, well, there's other organizations that sometimes will, will say, well, we, you could not work because you're not, uh, you're not a medical doctor or you're not a physical therapist or something like that. So that does not, uh, that kind of things where chiropractors are not allowed to work, they don't happen anymore. They used to, but they don't anymore. So that's one great step forward that we have had in Brazil since the inception of the profession uh, here. Uh, so most of the limitations, I would say, would be access, free access to chiropractors from the public, from the general public, and the, ex and the regulation uh, of and in the making of chiropractic as a profession in which only duly qualified chiropractors can work on. Right. Does the uh, Brazilian Chiropractic Association have uh, like a database or a place that people could go look to find one of these chiropractors? The website of the Brazilian Chiropractic Association, you will find a session called Encontre um Chiropraxista, like find a chiropractor. And in there, uh, in there, you will find a list of chiropractors separated by state and city, and you can find the nearest chiropractor to your town, city, or state, so that you can have the best available care in your region. But you are also a secretary and a member of the committee on the Council on Chiropractic Education of Latin America. Can you tell us a little bit about that organization? Of course, a little bit. The, this is a newer organization. It has been, uh, it, it has been incorporated uh, a couple of years ago, and we are still organizing ourselves in a way that we can make uh, a structure that will work in Latin America to make sure that every program in the land, not only in Brazil, but in the whole Latin America, every program that offers the chiropractic uh, course, the chiropractic program, will have the, the same standards, the same standards that are used everywhere around the world. We look for uh, the same level of competencies and skills and knowledge of chiropractors around the world, like in you know, the United States, in Canada, Australia, and Europe. Uh, we're still... Uh, working on that so that we will be 
in the future accepted by the Council of Chiropractic Education International as a, the representative for the Latin American region. So we're still having their support and we're very thankful for that. Uh, in this process of creating all this uh, framework in Latin America, because it, it already exists in many other places, but we have to make it culturally adaptable to our situation and the situation that involves the, lacks, the lack of, um, of loss in all Latin America. So it's not, the only, it's not only a thing in Brazil that, where chiropractic is not regulated. It is a thing across Latin America. So when, when you don't have a regulated profession, it's pretty different from what it's like in the United States where the Council on Chiropractic Education has a working relationship with, um, I suppose I would say the state, uh, state legis legislatures. Uh, we don't have that right here. So it's, it's gonna, we have to frame it in a completely different way. It's an, it's an independent body it, it has, well, it has to find other sources of income, where it has to have other uh, incentive structures to make sure that the, the programs in Latin America want to be accredited by the CCLA. So it's a lot, it has been a lot of um, challenging work to do, organizing all that and creating all that from what exists with the help and support of a lot of very bright chiropractors from around the world and from Latin America. So, so you are in private practice as a chiropractor in Brazil. Does it consist of strictly chiropractic? Do you have other types of practitioners involved in any way? I work in a multidisciplinary clinic. Uh, so just outside this door, you have three medical doctors working uh, on different specialties but every one of us works separately. So it is what we call multidisciplinary because we don't, have, we don't see the same patients unless I send them someone uh, as a referral or they send them to me. And that's mostly how, how chiropractors work around Brazil. There are chiropractors that work completely uh, isolated in their clinics and have no other healthcare personnel around. And we have some great examples around here of truly transdisciplinary clinics where the same patient will be seen by different kind of professionals. So that's something that our programs in Brazil are, are, are striving to educate uh, our chiropractors in, which is this idea of working with a lot of different healthcare professionals. And I have seen and I've been uh, to some of those clinics and it is amazing uh, how well that works when chiropractic care is integrated with other um, areas and everybody, and everybody speaks a common tongue and will be able to help the patient uh, to the best of their abilities with their uh, unique expertise which, well, it is heightened by the expertise of others. And you also work at, now, how do I pronounce this? Fivale? Fivo? Fivale. Uh, so you're a professor of advanced clinical chiropractic. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, we have in Brazil right now three universities that offer the, the program uh, which is a Bachelor in Sciences in Chiropractic. So that's what will uh, graduate people as chiropractors. One of them is Fevali University at the southernmost state in Brazil, which is called Rio Grande do Sul. That's where I have studied. There's where, there is where I am graduated from. There's where I have had the honor of working as a professor. But Fevali is one of the, the universities that we have in Brazil. We have another one in Sao Paulo, which is called Universidade Anhembi Morumbi. And then we, we have another one, which is UCEF in a state called Santa Catarina, which is just starting its first class ever. So that's 
a real good achievement that we uh, one of our um, a, uh, one of our chiropractors in Brazil really made a huge effort to make this happen. Uh, his name is Volme. Uh, so kudos for him for for doing all that. And well, now it's beginning. But you also at one point had worked at a it looks like a company or a corporate world with Metabil. Is that correct? Oh yes, that has been some time now. But yeah, uh, well, there are a lot, lots of places that chiropractors can work, and working a, at a at a company is one of them. I, I was the chiropractor to the white collar workers, and I had another friend that was the chiropractor for the blue collar workers, and it was an awesome experience because they the all the employees had uh, free access to the chiropractor, and they could come well whenever they wanted to of course everybody wanted to come to come all the time uh, so we had to organize it in a way which i could make uh, rounds and see everyone at least once before seeing the, the other ones again and well at least i was trying to do that but there were some people that needed more um, more care so we had to mix this fairness of seeing everyone with the necessity of some people that were really struggling with some issues and it, it, it worked great the company loved it because it lowered a lot of costs concerning healthcare for the company uh, they had less sick leave they had way less complaints concerning uh, musculoskeletal issues so it was a great experience for everyone and it lasted for, well, long years. Brazil has been uh, through some uh, economical crisis in the last decade, and one of them hit the company a, a little bit. Working at a company, is that pretty a common thing for chiropractors to be able to get involved with there? Or is that just kind of few and far between? We have a lot of chiropractors that do that in different of ways some of them have um some of them have contracts with the leadership of some workforces so there are a lot of chiropractors that work for worker unions uh they have different kind of contracts some of them have discounts for for people from that union some people work in the union itself and the union pays them and they see all the, the people that they can see. So it's pretty common. It's pretty common around here, but with different arrangements. And it's a great way of um, using our profession to help the working force in Brazil. We actually have right now chiropractors working on these places. Our idea is to make it bigger is to make it more available, is to create more courses, more programs actually, uh, so that we can have more chiropractors working everywhere. Because we're still less than uh, 1,500 chiropractors in a country which has 200 million people. So we still have a lot of cities that have never seen a chiropractic ever. Let's say that somebody wanted to relocate and become one of those chiropractors. What would be kind of their process? Well, the difficult thing is for people to have a visa, a working visa to work in Brazil. And that's usually something that will change from country to country. Because uh, Brazilian government has a, a politic of uh, a symmetry in a way that the type of laws that your, that your government asks of Brazilians for getting visas in your country is the same one that we, that we will ask you when you enter our country. So, uh, so that's our, our way of dealing with that. So it really depends from where you're at right now. It's different for people in different parts of the world. It's way easier for, for, for people in Latin America itself. But uh, it is in no way a difficult or not, 
not even close to impossible because we have a lot of people that are from the United States, South Africa, Europe, uh, Australia that are currently working in Brazil. So getting the visa is the, getting the visa is the bureaucratic and most difficult part of it. And but once you get past that, working in Brazil, it's pretty easy. You can just contact the Brazilian Chiropractic Association and we will do our best to help people relocate, relocate in Brazil as long as you are a duly qualified chiropractic chiropractor uh, qualified in a um, accredited chiropractic program anywhere in the world. Well, we will do our best to help you work here, including trying to get an idea of what are the, the government requisites for your particular situation and also um, giving all the details on how to be a part of our association and created, creating your practice and establishing yourself in the country. So that's something that happens quite a lot because, well, I believe Brazil is an amazing place to live at and people around the world sometimes might find that too and they will come here to live and work. So Brazil is a wonderful place to live and work. What do you like to do there? What do I like to do here? Yeah, do you like to, do you have somewhere you like to go hiking? Do you, places you like to visit in the country? Well, Brazil is the best country where you can find anything you want. So from the most amazing beaches, seashores with white sands, and glimmering seas from great mountains like the ones that you have in your background and well you can go to the jungle you can go to huge cities and metropolitan places like sao paulo uh, you can go to cultural places you can go stay with indians so there's so many different things you can do uh, i live in the southernmost part where, it, where it, we have a more uh, it's a colder climate around here. And so we, our touristic places also provide uh, even snow sometimes around the year. Uh, most people don't know that, but we do have snow in some parts of Brazil. Uh, so from the most amazing seashores to the most cold of the Southern places, you can do anywhere around this, you can do, um, anything around this country. Uh, I actually like uh, hiking when I go to places like Rio de Janeiro. We also have great food. So it's a great gastronomical experience. We have a lot of different uh, types of beers and great wineries as well. So from great food and drinks to great places to see, walk, adventures, and to be quiet and still, Anything you want to do, you can do around here. So what you're saying is Brazil has everything. We do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking you might have a few more chiropractors added to your roster after this interview. <laughs> Why? Well, we do hope so. We actually uh, strive to get more chiropractors around here. So it's great if people want to come, join in. You mentioned a, a very good culinary experience. What's your favorite traditional Brazilian food? Your favorite traditional Brazilian food? Well, I actually like uh, barbecue. Here in the southernmost part, that's a big thing. Uh, but I don't know if that would be considered a very typical Brazilian dish. It's barbecue after all. Uh, the way we make it is a little bit different. So if you slow roast a whole rib cage it, during 12 hours, that is one of the most amazing things you can ever eat. We call it costelão dos horas. Like, I don't know how to say costelão. It's like big rib cage. <laughs> uh, 12 hours. It's an, it, the, the meat like melts away. It's amazing. Uh, but aside from that, you can always get our feijoada, which is um, beans, a typical Brazilian kind of bean with a lot of different 
usually pork uh, parts in it. And it's just delicious. But well, in different parts of the country, you will find the most different types of dishes because then again, we have so many different cultures. Uh, but I think feijoada, which is this beans thing, is one of the most universal okay. in Brazil. So um, when people get here, people that are American or anywhere else in the world, they will not ask for a um, lemon squishy thing with cachaça and stuff. They will say, give me a caipirinha, por favor, with their weird uh, accent. Uh, which... Caipirinha. Caipirinha. Uh, because, well, it's all about the experience. So even the way you say it makes all the difference. That's right. So it, going back on to chiropractic, if you had some advice for uh, either students and or recent graduates, do you have any advice you could offer them? Well, I believe that the most important thing that someone that is uh, nearly graduating or just graduated, best advice I could give is uh, look for people that you admire in the profession. Uh, maybe your teachers, your professors, maybe uh, some chiropractor around uh, where you live that you have heard about, which has a great, a great passion for the profession. And do your best to watch these people working. Uh, I have had many colleagues uh, since the time that I was back in school uh, that I can tell have had great success in the profession because they were interested in seeing how these people work, how, how people who have uh, some, I don't know, dozens of years of experience, how these people work, how they they evaluate someone for the first time and how they report their findings and how they adjust and how they do all their procedures that they do. Uh, I think that's the most important thing that people can do, like uh, learn from experienced people in practice, first by observing them and maybe later by shadowing them somehow and working together, if that's even possible. Uh, that's an absolutely marvelous experience. And aside from that, well, keep studying because every day you will see brand new things and you will always need to keep your mind, your hands and your heart sharp. So I'm gonna quote that again with chiropractic. <laughs> right. Well, Dr. Faccini, I thank you so much for being on this show, for telling us about your perspective of Brazil, to attracting us to all of the sights and scenes of the area, and, and really giving us your insights. So it was a wonderful interview. Thank you so much. Well, it was an unspeakable pleasure for me being a part of this. And thank you for all your time and for all the work that you have been putting into this. Uh, it is really an honor for me and for Brazilians uh, to be a part of this. And if anyone needs to contact me, they can always look uh, in our association's website or, uh, for my contact, which is pretty difficult to, to spell. Uh, but if you will subtitle it, it's diretoriaacademica.org.br. Thank you.